bizarre archaeological finds scientists still can't explain. It's fascinating finding out about the past and how our ancestors lived. When academics have answers to the difficult questions of why things happened the way they did, it makes us feel comfortable knowing where we came from. There's only one thing more exciting than knowing the answers, and that is not knowing. When experts are left scratching their heads, that really thrills us. These are just some of the bizarre archaeological finds that scientists still can't explain, and we start with a really tall story. When Giants Roamed the Earth When we talk about giants, don't go picturing the fairy tale variety. There's no Jack and the Beanstalk here. The term giant is relative to whatever is average height at that time. Even so, that doesn't make the recent discovery in China of exceptionally tall men any less extraordinary or inexplicable. In 2016, archaeologists began excavating a settlement in Xiaoxia in Shandong province. They came across a graveyard over 5,000 years old containing the bodies of several men over 5 foot 9 and taller. One was even 6 foot 2. That's just based on their skeletons. Alive, they would have been taller. In Europe, the average man at that time was 5 foot 5, so these guys were really, really tall. They would have looked like giants. But how and why did this happen? It's left archaeologists baffled. These graves belonged to wealthy people, so they would have had better diets than most, but other wealthy people in China from that period didn't rise to such heights. Um, except perhaps with one exception. Legend has it that Confucius, who was also from Shandong, was 9 foot 6. Certainly a man of great stature. Now from tall to small. Hobbits in Indonesia. Long before Tolkien wrote about the Shire, early humans who have been nicknamed hobbits lived on an island in Indonesia. The remains were discovered in 2003 on Flores and date back between 100,000 and 60,000 years ago. Some of the tools found nearby are up to 190,000 years old. They were about 3 foot 6, had a small brain, large teeth, no chin, short legs, and large feet. Maybe that's why they were nicknamed the Hobbit. They hunted pygmy elephants, large rat-like creatures, and managed to steer clear of Komodo dragons. A Komodo encounter was seriously intense for 007, so what's that like if you're as tall as a five-year-old? Scientists don't know how or why these early ancestors were so small, but that's why they're so interesting. Stone Spheres of Costa Rica there are over 300 stone spheres in Costa Rica, on the Diquis Delta and on the Isla del Cano. They range in size from just a few centimeters to over 2 meters in diameter and they weigh more than 16 tons. They were made between the year 600 and after 1000 but before the Spanish invaded. They're not perfect spheres, but they almost are. Why are they there? What do they mean? We simply don't know. The largest spheres were found at least 40 kilometers from the possible rock quarry they came from. How could that rock have been transported? It's a real shame that most of them have been moved from their original locations where it was said they formed patterns and shapes with other large spheres. Many can be found in the homes of private collectors, although six did manage to make it to the National Museum in San Jose. Some say they had ceremonial or religious significance, others that they came from space or Atlantis, the usual opinion when you're not sure. As they've been moved from their original locations, we may now never know their real purpose. A 2000 year old computer. If you ever sit in front of your laptop and thank the 20th century for an invention that makes your life so much easier, then this is gonna make your jaw drop you are going to have to go further back in time with your gratitude. A lot further. The Antiki theorem mechanism was found in 1901 in a shipwreck and dates as far back to possibly 250 BC. This was the first computer and was invented by the Greeks. Antiki thera was used to track the cycles of the solar system, including eclipses, and the four-year pattern of the Olympic Games. Its workings are so complex that it was only when our technology improved that scientists were able to study it properly. CT scans showed inner workings and hidden inscriptions that made scholars around the world marvel at the genius that created this. Who was responsible? Who had that kind of brain power? 
We may never know the answer, but the smart money is on the likes of Archimedes or the not-so-famous astronomer Hipparchus. Whoever it was was smart enough to never need IT help. The Steppe Geoglyphs There are so many unanswered questions about structures and drawings in the landscape that are best viewed from the sky. How were our ancestors able to plan and execute the tasks? Why did they do it? And more intriguingly, who did they hope would see them? There is a group of over 200 giant squares, rings, and lines that are so bewildering that NASA scientists have been studying them from space. Yes, they are that huge. The steppe geoglyphs are in the Turgai region of northern Kazakhstan. What's also surprising is how recently they were discovered. In 2007, a man called Dimitri Day was browsing Google Earth when he stumbled upon the unusual site. The lines range in size from 295 feet to over 1,300 feet in length. They could have been made any time between 8,000 and 3,000 years ago. Scientists can't pin it down at the moment, let alone work out their purpose. Could they be monitors of the sun's progress? Could they be astronomical guides? Were the ancient people trying to make contact with the gods? We may never know, and that's why they are so fascinating. The world's first temple or the Garden of Eden The ancient ruins of Gubekli Tepe in southeastern Turkey have rewritten our knowledge of mankind. The world's oldest monument was discovered in 1994. Its elaborate carved circular structures and T-shaped pillars are 7,000 years older than Stonehenge and 8,000 years older than the pyramids. In fact, we are closer in time to Stonehenge than Gubekli Tepe. These monuments were built before the invention of the wheel, when there were no metal tools. The whole thing was put together by hand. Animal remains have shown that this structure was built by hunter-gatherers more than 12,000 years ago. Archaeologists have long held the belief that it was only when early man settled down to grow crops that complex societies could form. But now they think that maybe it was the other way around. Society formed as a result of having to work together to build these huge structures. The workforce would have needed food and drink, maybe early beer, which would have to be regularly supplied. So they grew and harvested crops. Smaller versions of Gubeki Tepe have been found in settlements 125 miles away. It's almost like they were local churches and Gubeki Tepe was the big cathedral. As if that wasn't enough, the area has also been called the location of the Garden of Eden. It's hard to believe, but this was once a very lush, fertile land. Eden was said to exist where four rivers descended and two of those rivers were the Tigris and Euphrates. Gubeki Tepe lies between both. The Bible also says that Eden was surrounded by mountains. Big tick again for Gubeki Tepe. Other people think the story of Eden is an allegory for when hunter-gatherers settled down to farm the land. Again, that's what happened at Gubeki Tepe. The truth is, we just don't know. Scientists have just begun to scratch the surface of this incredible find. There is still so much more to uncover and discover. Olmec Stone Heads The Olmec civilization from the Gulf Coast of Mexico knew how to leave their mark. They built giant stone heads. The Olmec predate the Mayans and Aztecs, living over a thousand years BC. The heads range in size from 5 feet to 12 feet tall, weighing up to 60 tons. The material they're made from is volcanic basalt, which was a good 70 kilometers from where they were found. So how were they transported? Scientists think maybe they were put on top of wooden rollers, but this would have needed a huge amount of force and manpower. The statue's features are very distinctive. People have wondered if the Olmec were influenced by African cultures, which would mean people were navigating and crossing oceans years ahead of their time. This would be incredible, but actually the faces are very similar to those of people found in the Gulf today. The one thing that most do agree on, though, is that they probably depict the rulers of the day. How's that for making an impact? The Iron Pillar of Delhi at first glance, this is an average-looking metal pillar in northern India, placed in the middle of the remains of the country's oldest mosque. It stands fully exposed to the elements, including heat, dust, cold, and rain. But this is an iron pillar made over 1,600 years ago. It should have turned into grains of rust after just a century or so. 
The pillar weighs six and a half tons and is over seven meters tall. It has the Sanskrit language inscribed on its shaft, telling its own story that was erected by King Chandra and celebrates his victories. He ruled from 375 to 415. Scientists and archaeologists have been left baffled by its sturdiness. What we do know is that the pillar was made by a process called forge welding. Experts from the Indian Institute of Technology say that a protective film was created in the process, which is why the iron is still standing tall. Why can't we do that today? There you have it, some of the most fascinating mysteries from our past. As time marches on and we discover more about the Earth and space, it's tempting to think that we are smarter than any who came before us. But the truth is, the more we know about our ancestors, the more we should be humbled by their incredible achievements. Do you have explanations for any of these mysteries? What bizarre archaeological finds do you know of? Leave your comments below. <music>